My, what a good morning to be with God's people and celebrate the greatest gift that was ever given, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I want to talk this morning for a few moments on this Christmas Eve morning, God's great gift, God's great gift of his love to us. Galatians chapter four, verses four through five says, but when the right time came, God sent his son, born of a woman subject to the law. God sent him to buy freedom for us who were slaves to the law so that he could adopt us as his very own children. And then Luke chapter two says, and at that time, the Roman emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All returned to their own ancestral towns to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who who was now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth. Everybody said she gave birth. To her firstborn son, she wrapped him in snuggly strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. That night, there were shepherds standing in the field, staying in the field nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly, an angel assured them, don't be afraid. Everybody say, don't be afraid. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior... Yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find a baby wrapped in strips of cloth lying in a manger. And suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. I have a question for you this morning. Where does love come from? Where does love come from? It's something that we sing about and we talk about and we think about. But the emotion, the sense of love, where does love come from? I would suggest to you this morning that love, true love, is a gift. True love is a gift. To be loved and be able to love is an absolute wonderful divine gift. The Bible tells us exactly where love comes from. 1 John chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. It says, Beloved, let us love one another. For love is of God, and love comes from God. And everyone who loves is born of God. So the Bible directly says that love, true, divine, God love, comes from God himself. Now, by nature, human love, our humanness, our human love, is selfish and conditional. We love those who love us, and we love people who are kind to us and who offer some benefit to us. But Jesus taught a different level of love. He said, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who mistreat you. If someone slaps you on the cheek, turn to the other side so they can do it on the other side. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Do to others as you'd have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners love those who love them. And if you do good to those who are good to you, what credit is that to you? Even sinners do that. 1 Corinthians 
I think the Apostle Paul lays to pen and paper, if you will, as the Holy Spirit inspires him. And in this familiar passage that most of us here know and have heard, it describes, I think, one of the best ways in all of Scripture on what true love, God love is. It says love is patient and love is kind. Love is not jealous or boastful or proud or rude. It does not demand its own way. Love is not irritable and it keeps no record of being wrong. It does not rejoice about injustice, but rejoices whenever the truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful and endures through every circumstance. God's love Agape is self-sacrificing. It's unconditional. God's love, agape love, Greek word agape, loves those who don't deserve our love, those who disappoint us and mistreat us and reject us and even hate us. And agape love, this gift of love, This dimension of love is only possible when it is born of God in our hearts. Agape love is of God, initiated and coming from. The scripture says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. A saying that my wife and I have grown to love is this. When you know you are loved, you live differently. When you know you are loved, you live differently. Love is the greatest. Love is wins the day, not facts, not judgment. No, love. Love is the greatest. Love wins the day. Lamentations chapter three says, the faithful love of God never ends. His mercies never cease. Great is his faithfulness. His mercies begin afresh every morning. This morning, we could look through the scripture and we could look at the different characteristics of God. We could look at the great characteristics of God, and there are so very many. But I might ask you this morning, what is the grand? What is the defining? What is the greatest characteristic of the God that we serve, of the God that we worship? I would suggest to you this morning that the greatest characteristic of God is his love for us. Now, many people are dysfunctional when it comes to understanding God's love. Many people have a misunderstanding of the love of God. Many people have a misunderstanding of the character of God. There's people that don't want to pick a Bible up because they feel like God would zap them. If I've heard more than once, I've heard a hundred times, Pastor Matt, if I come to your church, the walls would fall in. There's a human tendency for us to not understand and have a clouded wrong view of God and his love for us. Man, when you think of the Old Testament, people read some of the pages in the Old Testament, and they're like, man, I don't want to mess with him. I don't want to get zapped. And then when we read the Ten Commandments and the commandments of the Lord, and they're perfect, we're like, wow, that's something else. I don't measure up. I don't know if I want to get close to that. And so we walk our way and we walk our lives unloved, unreceiving, of God's love because we are uninformed on truly the character of God. You've heard 
the judgments of God in the Old Testament. But when Moses got really close to God, probably the closest anybody has ever been, this is what was said of God. Exodus chapter 34, 6 through 7. Yahweh the Lord. Moses, God was revealing in an intimate way who he was to Moses and to his people. And this is what it says in Exodus chapter 34. The God of compassion and mercy. I am slow to anger and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. I lavish unfailing love to a thousand generation. I will forgive iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Psalm chapter 86 and verse 15 says, But you, O Lord, are a God of compassion and mercy, slow to anger, and filled with unfailing love and faithfulness. This morning, as we sit here contemplating the Christmas story, which we've all no doubt heard so many times, I wonder if we miss sometimes the grand message. I wonder if we miss the whole point, the plot of the story that God initiated a relationship with each one of us and desperately loves each one of us so much. But as you sit here this morning and as I hear this, I'm challenged when I think of my own frailties. I'm challenged when I think of of my own wretchedness and my own sin and how that I don't measure up. In fact, the Bible says in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, it says no matter how hard we try or how good we think we have been or not been, the Bible says that all have sinned and fallen short of God's glorious standard. Sin by biblical definition is simply to miss the mark on what God's will is for your life. It's to live below what God intended for you to live. The Bible says, for we have all sinned. And so we know the human capacity to lie, to cheat, to lust, to have issues, to be hard to deal with, to have a bad attitude. It goes on and on and on. We can get ourselves so messed up in our culture and our society. There's so many wretched things from from drug addictions to terrible behaviors to to being selfish and being only about you. And, And the list is a mile long of the characteristics of sinful living. And when we think about the human capacity of sin and the capacity of sin, God looks at you and says, but I still love you. I think it'd be a good exercise between now and the celebration of the birth of Jesus. You go home and You look at a mirror. Don't look at your beauty. But look in your eyes. Look in your eyes. Man, oh man, oh, look in your eyes. And get a big smile on your face. And say the truth. God really loves me. God really loves that person. 
that you're looking in your own eyes. God loves you so much. I'm a firm believer after ministering all these years, brothers and sisters, that until we can embrace God's love, we will never be healed. Until we can embrace how much God, but Pastor Matt, I've done this and I fail here and I fall here. So what? Turn to your neighbor and say, so what? God loves us. Nothing surprises God. You think, well, Pastor Matt, the world is so evil and so messed up. God certainly has to be surprised. No, he's not. He's not at all. That's why he sent Jesus, because he knew it was going to be a wreck and it was going to be a mess. And he was not willing that it would stay like that. And so he sent the greatest gift, a token, a representation of who he is, the Father's love in Christ Jesus. That's why, brothers and sisters, we have to get to the bottom of the truth that God loves us no matter what. Scripture says that love is of God. It means that the love we show to others emanates from him, the source. Believers can love with God's heart because God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given to us. God is the generator, the fountain, and the wellspring of love for others. The love we show mirrors God's love for us because it flows from his heart into our hearts and out to others. The greatest love story, the greatest act of love, the Christmas gift, our salvation, our redemption, our way, God's extreme extension of his love, God's greatest expression of his love, that he would send his only son in the likeness of human being, that he might reconcile us together with him. The gift of Jesus. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8 says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were yet sinners. 1 John chapter 4 verses 9 and 10 says, God showed how much he loved us by sending us his one and only son into the world so that we might have eternal life through him. This is real love. Not that we loved God, but that God loved us and said you cannot love God until you embrace his love, until you receive his love and sent his son as a sacrifice to take away our sins. First John 4, 19 says we love each other because he loved us first. Love, God's love is the most revolutionary thing that can happen in your life. I'll ask you this morning, will you receive this gift of God's love? Will you receive the gift of Jesus? Sounds so simple and sounds so much like we ought to just do it. But actually it's simple yet a little more complicated than that. Not by God, but by us. A barrier to God's love that can revolutionize your life is we lack an understanding of how much we need that love. We can lack an understanding of how much we need this love. In fact, I believe you don't know how much you need until you have been filled, and then you realize how much you needed the love of God. Secondly, 
many of us, as I've mentioned earlier in this message, we don't think we're lovable. But I want you to know you are. You are. Just open your heart to God's gift. Quit trying in your own strength. Quit trying with your own ingenuity. Quit trying in your own strength and your own power. Quit trying to put all of life together and lay it down and receive the love of God in Christ Jesus into your heart and into your being. I'm sure there's people here this morning as you stand with me. And there's been so many attempts to block you from God's love. Because when you receive the love of Jesus, it radically changes your life. You are literally born again. The Bible talks about being born again from that old human nature to now a nature that you are connected to God in a real and living way. And that only comes through Jesus Christ and the power of God's Spirit moving into a a heart that realizes their need of a Savior that realizes their need that they are missing something. Maybe you've experienced what we would call religion, which is a very complicated man's way approach to God where we put all these things in place to say, it's got to be done like this. But yet, it's not religion. It's spiritual. And it's a relationship that changes your heart and changes your life when you realize that you are loved, that you are forgiven, and you are accepted into a holy relationship with God himself because of the extreme gift of his love. I love that verse that says, while we were yet sinners. No, I didn't get all cleaned up or right or everything and set everything in order And then God said, bang, now you're good enough. No, way before that, God said, Matt, I know you're going to need me. I know you're going to need some divine help. You're going to make a mess of things. You're going to get it wrong, but that's okay. I love you so much. I'm never going to let anything separate my love from you. That's some really good news. Glory to God in the highest. Glory to God in the highest. When you know your love, you live differently. You and I, brothers and sisters, are the target of heaven's love. Not something you earn. It's not something you prop yourself up so you're good enough. It's something you say, I want that. You receive 
the gift of the Christ child, his extreme love for you. Romans chapter 8, one of my favorite chapters in the Bible, the last part of the chapter, throws down the gauntlet and says, what can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus? You're loved with a powerful love this morning. God is for you, not against you. God extended his hand of mercy and his divine love. He initiated. He brokered it. He came up with the plan. And he wants you. And he loves you. Will you receive the Christ child this morning? Will you receive the gift of Christmas into your heart? Lord, in Jesus' name, we thank you. Lord, that your love is so extreme. It's beyond imagination. No mortal mind could ever pen. We would run out of ink and out of paper to describe the love of God. It is unending. It is freeing. It is forgiving. It has us in mind, our benefit, our blessing, our life, our goodness. You love us that much, Lord. You want to bless us. You want to walk with us. You've saved us. You want to strengthen us. You want to show us the way. You want to lead us. Father, I pray all across this room this morning, God, Lord, that people would right now open their hearts to the Christ of Christmas, to your greatest gift, the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself for us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Silent night, oh, all is calm, all is bright, round yon virgin mother. Jesus.
us, Lord, at thy birth. more time, silent night, holy night, all oh, is calm, all is bright, round yon as we depart in peace we thank you for your Holy Spirit now that gives us fresh life Lord that speaks to us in a clear living way and we appreciate we value we honor the truth of the gift that you sent us that we might have eternal life and more abundant life Lord, as we leave this place of worship, we rest in your salvation. We rest that no matter what you love us, we rest in the truth of the Christ child in your extreme effort to make a way for each one of us. As we leave service this morning on this Christmas Eve morning we say yes in our hearts yes to Jesus yes to your spirit living inside of us 